Hey, family, let's do this. Hey, you guys, welcome back to 3130 Beloved. I'm just trying to get myself situated over here before we get things going. But um, man, it has been, what, a year or two since my last interview. But in that time, you know, God's really renewed my perspective um, for Kingdom Purpose, not just you know, for my kingdom, but for his, um, he's ushered me into working for a nonprofit harder than I've ever worked for really uh, any, any company in my entire life. Um, I also got married in the middle of a pandemic, whole other story. Um, but we're not wasting any time today. We're going to jump right in to identity in Christ, especially during one of the most craziest seasons. I think our young lives have ever experienced right now. Um, God's really let, you know, Psalm 1 just kind of sink in that um, our faith and our hope is found in the Lord so that we can be like trees planted by streams of water, you know, with our leaves unwithering no matter what the season is. Um, so with that, jumping into identity, I have waited two years to talk with this next guest about same-sex attraction um, and how we as a church body can just do a better job loving our brothers and sisters, caring for them, having compassion for them, and without judgment. Um, I, I really want to kind of put to rest a lot of lies that the world has claimed over them through biblical truths. Um, so this next guest, his name is Beckett Cook. He is the author of A Change of Affection, a gay man's incredible story of redemption. Um, you know, this book is... So so good. I can't speak. I can't speak more about it. But um, um, the four is written by Francis Chan as well, which is so cool. But before all of that, he was actually one of Hollywood's most successful and sought out set designers. Um, he's worked with just to name a few, um, Meryl Streep, um, Oprah Winfrey, Natalie Portman, Christina Aguilera, Carrie Underwood, Katie P was a longing that had yet to be satisfied. So without further ado, let's meet Beckett. Where is Beckett? Dum, 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 dum. Oh boy. Let's see. How do you, I think I saw an earlier. Let's see, let's see. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh boy. Go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, that took so long. I was like, I haven't done this in so long. Oh no. I well, my connection was saying it was like I don't know, something was off, but now it looks like it's working. So oh, good. good. Oh, good, 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 good. <clears throat> awesome. I hope you heard my little intro of your. Fun. I did. I heard a little bit of it. Okay, good. I mean, I can't imagine what it must feel like to publish a book and just go on these book tours and stuff. That's probably insane. I would love to just hear how the Lord's really stretched you in this journey. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you for having me on. Uh, yes. It's uh, great to be finally with you after talking about this for two years. <laughs> Literally but, the um, manuscript. I was like, that email was 2018. <laughs> I know. Um, well, I'm glad we finally got to this. But yeah, so this past year, I mean, since the book came out, a lot has changed. Um, mm -hmm. It's been, there's been highs and lows. When it, three weeks after the book came out, my set design agency dropped me as a client. Okay. <clears throat> and um, that was kind of shocking. I kind of knew, it wasn't that shocking, because I knew that, once the book was out, it was going to be kind of difficult for me to work on the set with those like actresses and, and pop stars with this kind of book out in the world, because it just becomes untenable to be on the set. Because if someone on the set is like, oh, that guy wrote that book, and then it just becomes like, a, yeah. you know, people implode and like, there's all kinds of drama. So, yeah. so my agents my agency dropped me. It was kind of funny. They sent me an email saying, Hey, it was kind of this vague email, like, Hey, 
um, some things have shifted around at the agency and we think it's best if we just part ways. And I'm like, what? Like <laughs> I've been your best client for 10 plus years. Yeah. Um, but it's okay because I knew that God was pulling me into like a more of a full-time ministry thing, which is what he's done. And he's been, you know, so gracious. And, and I've basically been, you know, speaking at churches around the country and conferences um, for the, for the last year. And God has just been so gracious in providing for me and for my needs. And so wow. this is really, I, I said this before on, on another thing, but, um, this is the first time I really feel like I'm, I'm in my calling mm -hmm. in my whole life because yeah. I've always done things that weren't quite, that didn't quite fit with me, but this is like, okay, I'm in my calling. This is what God has called me to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and so it feels good to be in it. Although it is, there are a lot of challenges that come with it and um, a lot of difficulties, but it's, yeah. it's, I, I'm in my calling. So it's been, it has stretched me a lot. And, um, <laughs> and, but it's made me just more, it's made me closer to God and it's made me rely on him way more than I, mm -hmm. than I have in the past. Wow. I can't imagine, so, I can't imagine, but I can't imagine just having constant dependency in every way yeah. through this, especially this season too, um, this crazy life season. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to kind of jump right in if that's okay. Yeah. Um, in your book, and I hope it's okay to share this because I think our generation um, has allowed or used relationships to really replace um, our place of worship, um, worshiping the Lord. Um, and I think it's really important to to first kind of begin in, in this heart posture. Um, as you say in your book too, you said, um, I knew that someone out there would save me and give meaning to my life. And this is before you met the Lord and this is while you were um, in a same sex relationship. And I think I would just love to hear, you know, how has Jesus met um, and continues to meet that longing um, that really only he can fill. Yeah, I mean, it's true. He can only fill that because you know, I, over the, you know, whatever, since 1993 to 2009 in Los Angeles, that's when I moved to LA is in the 93. I'm very old mm -hmm. school. And, um, <laughs> and I, you know, I went through so many relationships and uh, so many really serious ones and yeah. other non-serious ones. And, <clears throat> and it wasn't until I got saved in 2009, September 20th, 2009, that, 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 that void was completely filled by Jesus. And yeah. it, um, in, in the past, it had always been this kind of quid pro quo, as I talk about in the book, it's like, the relationships I had were always like, well, if you know, if I'm doing well, and I'm, you know, if I'm in shape, like, and you are too, then we're good. But if something falters a little bit, then I'm out. And yeah. It was always that like tension going on. And that's not just in gay relationships, it's in, it's in other ones, yeah. you know, it's heterosexual ones too, but especially with gay men, it's a very <laughs> prominent theme. Um, yeah. And so <clears throat> that kind of all melted away because once got Jesus, I mean, once I met Jesus, it was just like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. This unconditional love, this flooding of his spirit and he'll never leave or forsake me. He never lies to me. He, he'll never cheat on me. Yeah. And unlike all my ex-boyfriends, but he, <laughs> he is so all, and so when I got saved, it was just like this flood of consolation, as it's called, um, this like spiritual consolation was just flooding over me for like years, for like three years. I was just like, every day I would wake up and just be like in tears, or I'd listen to a sermon and just start bawling or, read the Bible and just cry because I would read the Bible and be like, I can't believe I'm part of this God story. Yeah. I'm part of this yeah. story, this plan of salvation that God, yeah. like this is insane. And, mm. and then um, now it's, you know, the constellation isn't as dramatic, but it's, but I still have, I mean, that my relationship with the Lord it's like, in the, I'm going to him for him now, instead of going to him for the spiritual pleasure I get out of it. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it's more, it's a little more work, but it's worth it. And he um, still satisfies everything. I mean, even when I'm having bad days, like I still feel 
satisfied to in my core. I feel super satisfied because I have a relationship with the king of the universe and not to mention I have eternal life. So, um, <laughs> not to so mention. I, I, um, I don't ever, you know, long, I don't ever want to go back to Egypt. I don't ever want to do that again and go back to that life. I just, yeah. I'm so, Jesus is so much better than all of that. He's so much better. It's so much more fulfilling. And um, yeah, and even like when I get, every once in a while when I have like a temptation or whatever, I go to the Lord and I'm like, God, I'm longing for intimacy right now. So mm -hmm. what helped me in that department? Because right now I need your Holy Spirit to fill that void right now. And, yeah. and I feel, feel that intimacy that I'm longing for. And it's crazy because he, he does it like that. Like he just yeah, fills that wow. and I, and that like temptation just passes. Wow. So, so it's cool. Like I, yeah, I, uh, I, he's been, it's been amazing the last 11 years almost. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now that you're, you know, talking about just kind of like, I remember a part of your book where you're like in the middle of this incredible party in Paris, I think, and you're with someone super famous and, basically anything and everything this world wants you to chase after and you're just sitting there like I feel so empty this is so meaningless to me and um I can recall something very similar when I used to you know rave and do drugs and stuff and I would be like I'm on this high but <clears throat> now I just feel nothing mm -hmm. um what was that kind of like for you when you realized this is so empty um there's got to be something more to life um can, can you kind of share a little bit about that transition and then to like being Tim Chaddock? I know it's all in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I was at Paris Fashion Week and uh, so yes. it was Mar March of 2009. And I, you know, was like going to the parties and all the things as usual. And, um, and yeah, I, it's, I had that moment at one night at this party where the, everyone was dancing, drinking champagne. I was drinking champagne. And I just felt this overwhelming emptiness. And I didn't know what to do about it because I knew that God wasn't an option for me because I was gay. And so I, I was, see, the thing is like, I was clear because as a kid, I grew up in the Catholic church and I went to Catholic schools. I knew what the Bible had to say about homosexuality. I wasn't, it wasn't, uh, a mystery to me and yeah. it was very clear um so mm -hmm. i just always knew that that wasn't an option so when i had that night in paris it was just like what do i do now because yeah i've had i've done, gone to all the parties i've done all the things i've met everyone i've been everywhere is that all there is mm -hmm. and now what do i do right and um but in god's mercy six months later that's when i uh was invited to reality la and met and tim, met tim chaddock and and um and and heard tim chaddock preach on romans yes. chapter seven and was just like completely blown away by the the gospel mm. and then you know as you know in the story i had <laughs> that day the first day i ever went to church which was amazing yeah. praise god that he did that the first time like he it was a road to damascus moment where the holy spirit just over overwhelming yeah. and god um and i and god was like i'm god jesus is my son heaven's real hell's real the bible's true welcome to my kingdom <laughs> and i just <laughs> i started crying and crying and crying and so couldn't stop welcome crying for, for days and um so that's th that uh that was that was when i knew that my life was completely knew and, and changed yeah. and wow. i knew i knew in that moment too because it happened a second time that day i had another experience and another encounter with god yeah which was really powerful started crying again and um i knew that homosexual behavior was i knew that homosexuality was not my identity anymore mm -hmm. and that it was no longer part of my life but i didn't care because i just met jesus and I, right. it was just like this wow. instantaneous understanding and recognition that I was a new creation in Christ and that this, the old man had passed away. That was not who I, who I was anymore. And, mm. and it was so clear and I'm so thankful because, because I still like today when I pray, I'm like, God, thank you for making 
not only saving me, but making everything so clear instantly. Like it was so clear. And uh, wow. so I, that was an amazing day. And I, I just, uh, I am still just in shock that, that it all happened. Yeah, same. <laughs> like reading this, I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just incredible. And, you know, ac actually you mentioning um, growing up in the Catholic church, um, this is just something that, a lot of my friends from high school, college, up till now, who grew up in the Catholic Church, usually walk away from their faith because of like all the rules and laws and the threatening of like, you're going to hell if you think X, Y, Z, just like a lot of, I guess, legalistic. Like religious, um, religiousness. Yeah. 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 And, and obviously, like, that's not, that's not who God is. Um, um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's out of love that we choose him. But I... I had this girlfriend who I've known for years before I was a Christian and, and now in Christ. And she has just witnessed growing up in the Catholic church, a lot of um, her friends who came out, they were ostracized and really treated horribly and shamed and judged. And she does not like, she never wants to hear the gospel or anything about Christianity when I try and talk about it. Cause she's like, well, they Christians are like anti-gay. So I'm not for them. And I'm like, Oh, I look so badly want to like introduce <laughs> Jesus really is. Um, yeah. But, I, but there's like no room to weave in there. Um, and obviously, there are still churches that need to repent from that. But I guess, why do you think some churches, um, I, I people, you know, weigh same sex attraction as like, a sin that's heavier than another one? Well, I think a couple things. I think historically it's been like an easy sin to kind of pick out and, and, and kind of pick on, so yeah. to speak. And so <clears throat> that's been maybe historically, I, as I, you know, mentioned to you earlier, I, I didn't, I had no real experience with the church until I got saved 11 years ago. So I accept the Catholic church, which was different, but um, when I was a kid, but, uh, uh Oh, so, um, uh, so I there, I think the church actually, yeah, I mean, there, here's the thing. It's like the prodigal son. It's like, there's the older brother and the younger brother. The older brother is bitter that the younger brother is, is mm. prodigal and the younger brother. It's like, it's like legalism versus antinomianism. And, yeah. and, and I think the church and us as Christians are constantly trying to balance that. We're either, we're either being the older brother as a church and being super harsh, mm -hmm. especially with this sin, or we're being the younger brother and, yeah. and not even, and not even speaking the truth about it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Jesus, if you look at the gospels and you read through the gospels, I mean, Jesus, when he speaks to people one-on-one, -on -one, it's like, he never, it's, he, he's the perfect, he's the master of balancing grace and truth. And he, Amen. When he speaks to people, he never just leaves them in their sin. He calls yeah. them to repentance. Like he, he loves them. He's like, there's so many passages where he says, Jesus loved them, but, but he calls them to repent. And, and so he never just leaves people as they are. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. I, I mean, I think that, um, I think that now given the culture and how fresh, how, how much pressure there is in the culture with this issue, I think churches are actually, not talking about it <laughs> because they're afraid right. to talk about it. So yes. there's even so it's gotten it's actually come like a, there's like been a 180 now. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, whole yeah. thing. Yep. So it's like it's a love that dare not speak its name now at church. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's a weird situation because you know it's funny because I when I came out as a gay man, so I don't know 25 years ago, mm. it was this kind of a scandal. And now when I come out as a Christian to people, it's a scandal. So like either way I lose. Like I'm just like, well, I have the worst timing in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, give me a chance. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, I'm even mind blown by something. I asked you last night, I was like, whoa. Um, where, we, where you mentioned that, that having same sex attraction isn't a sin. It's not exactly like right. But it's kind of like in the same way when a man lusts after a woman that's wrong, but it's mm -hmm. not sin until he like acts on it and obviously right. repentance of the heart. And that just kind of blew my mind because I thought same sex attraction is 
Well, I guess that's true. Like the thought of it can't be a sin because that's your thought. It's acting on it. That makes it sin. Can you kind of um, clarify that more? Because if I literally just realized that came to the realization <laughs> of that last night. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. Yeah. Well, yes. Same sex. Uh, let's just say same sex attraction orientation is not a sin. I mean, I still have yeah. vestiges of same sex attraction. That's not a sin. But Jesus said, you know, if you lust in your heart, you've mm -hmm. committed adultery. So if mm -hmm. that attraction turns into lust in a split second, then it, it suddenly becomes a sin, whether right. you're heterosexual or have same sex attraction. So um, mm -hmm. what what is a sin? I mean, what we talked about, what is a sin is the behavior. So if there's, or even like the lusting in the heart is, is a sin. So mm -hmm. that's when it, that's when it crosses over to sinfulness. So that's the distinction, I think. Yeah. Huge. Also mentioned in this book. Um, <laughs> and then I, I have a couple more questions. Um, thank you so much for everything you've shared thus far. It's so helpful. Um, I think for those who um, are gay and don't know the Lord or maybe don't want to come to the Lord because of the horror stories they've heard or the people with the picket sticks outside <laughs> wherever just yelling nonsense. Um, you know, I, I guess what encouraging words would you say to them today of who Jesus, who the Lord really is? Yeah, well, first of all, Augustine, St. Augustine, um, the mm -hmm. one of the early church fathers, he said, this is, a, I say this to people who, who say the same thing, who've been hurt by the church or who have been hurt by Christians. Yeah. I just say, never judge a philosophy by its abuse, which is what wow. Augustine said. And, and go to the gospels, just go to Jesus and, and actually read the gospels and see what Jesus has to say. See what, because you'll be shocked. I mean, people, people often talk about Jesus and Jesus is love, Jesus, but yeah, he's love, but there's some other things in the gospels that are like, whoa, whoa. I can't believe he just said that. <laughs> so I would just go to the gospels, seek after him. And this life is so short. I always talk about this. I always try to put it all into perspective. This life is a vapor. It goes by in two seconds and eternity is forever. Forever. And I talk in the book, I talk about the rich young ruler. There's a, in, in the gospels, there's a story of the rich young man or the rich young ruler. And, mm. Mm. and I urge, urge people who in the LGBTQ community to, and I know this is a difficult, I know it's, I mean, I live through it. So I know it's difficult, yeah. but the rich young man comes up to Jesus and he's like, good teacher, how can I in inherit eternal life? And Jesus kind of challenges him and goes through all these things. And Jesus says, well, you lack one thing. Go sell all your possessions and come mm -hmm. follow me. Because he knew what the functioning idol was in this guy's life. Mm -hmm. And the guy, this is a guy that had a personal invitation mm -hmm. to follow Jesus by Jesus himself. And right. he, tur he turns away and walks away because he, he had great possessions, it says. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically he gave up this relationship with Jesus and to become a follower of him. And, and he gave up eternal life because he had great possessions. And that's what I, that was the deal breaker for him. And mm -hmm. in the gay community, this is the deal breaker. It's like, and I know it is. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. the deal breaker, not just, it's also the deal breaker in for a lot of heterosexuals who, who think that, Oh, I can't be a part of a church that believes homosexual behavior is a sin. And it, it's, it becomes a deal breaker. And it's like, mm -hmm. don't let this issue become a deal breaker from you following Christ. It's like, Amen. it's, I mean, Ooh. it's, it, Jesus is so much better. Everything in this world pales, pales, yes. pales in comparison to Jesus. So don't, wow. don't focus on this one. And the thing is, yeah. Paul, I always talk about this, Paul, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, like, is a good example for me and for everyone. He says and to everything. imitate him. And, and he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. But Paul ran around the Mediterranean, planting churches, sharing, you know, preaching the gospel. Yeah. And he was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was, he was um, Man. Ja jailed. He was, yeah. I mean, everything. And uh, everything. And he didn't care and he was single and Jesus was yeah. single. And, yeah. and he just, he didn't care because all he cared about was the, the kingdom of God and advancing Amen. the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And if we have that mindset of like, 
this isn't about me. It's not about my little world and my white picket fence with, you know, my perfect spouse, blah, blah, blah. This is about the kingdom of God. Like, yes, that's get the big picture in mind. And I think that helps, helps kind of get over the small details. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping him on that throne yeah. in this season too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. That's huge. Wow. Huge. That, that kind of blew my mind too. Right now. Like, oh my God. Um, yeah. And I mean, I guess I drink a lot of water, by the way. I don't no, know. Why. Yeah, same, 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 same. <laughs> um, I think now there, sometimes there becomes this, and I've fallen into this too, where there's this blurry line of accepting um, and loving our brother and sister um, who is gay, but to the point of where do you draw the line where I'm now condoning their behavior and being like, Oh, you do you. And, um, because I'm so fearful that they're going to hate me or mm -hmm. categorize me with those Christians. Um, I guess like, is, can you share some wisdom of how to stay rooted in like the conviction of what our, our Bible says, um, mm -hmm. um, while, still respecting those that we may disagree with, you know, is there, is that possible? Yeah. Well, it's becoming more and more difficult in our culture now to stand firm in our convictions, but also have people uh, understand that we love them in spite of that. And so yeah. it's, it's become very, very difficult. Um, and Jesus, uh, Jesus says, in the in, in uh, John 15, he says, if the world mm -hmm. hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If oh. you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But mm -hmm. because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore mm -hmm. the world hates you. So in a, in a certain sense, we're always going to be hated as, as Christians for because the, the gospel is pretty offensive. Um, offensive. It's offensive. And um, the truth is, can be offensive. And so in that way, we, but we have to, like I talk about in the book, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in exile, mm -hmm. exile in Babylon, as we're in exile in this world. Mm -hmm. And they refused to compromise God's word by one iota. They were commanded basically to bow down to that culture, to the mm -hmm. golden statue. Yeah. And they refused to do it knowing that there was a fiery furnace they were going to be thrown into. And they, but they didn't, they refused to compromise God's word. And so did Daniel. And yeah. And that's as, as believers, we have to be able to have our conviction settled before we try to go out into the world and, and love people because we can't, because it's just going to be confusing to everyone if we try yeah. to kind of be like, well, I'm not really sure if it's a sin. I'm not, I don't really know because that's not helpful to anyone. It's yeah, just like, right. have your conviction settled and then love people. And that's right. the thing. It's like people... People, you know, ask me about this love thing. It's like, I have nothing in my heart but love for people in the yeah. gay community. I mean, some yeah. of my closest friends are, you know, my old friends, are, I'm so close with them and I have nothing but love for them. Like, yeah. there but for the grace of God. Like, I, God had grace on me. And so I just, I, all I have is love for them. There's nothing else I have for them. So mm -hmm. I just... Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, I would just recommend or suggest loving people generously and loving them, um, uh, loving them well, but also at the same time, having the convictions in your yeah. heart and, and having everything settled before you do that. Right, right. Yeah. And oh, I just had a part in, the, in your book that I remembered that is relevant to this. But I think the biggest thing was that that one dinner table where everyone started shouting at each other and you're like, Hey, I'm not here to win an argument. I'm not here to have an agenda. I just came to have dinner with you guys, driving an hour just to be here because I love you. And everyone was <laughs> like, oh. And it's kind of, as soon as you share your heart, all the, the, the politics of it, the, like all this right. you know, polarizing sides just kind of get to like, oh, yeah, let's just love each other and let that be the biggest yeah. priority. That was a dinner I went to in Malibu and I was in the middle, I was in seminary at the time and, mm. and uh, it was a pretty hostile environment. And I, yeah. I didn't know I was being set up by, there were like eight people at this dinner and none mm -hmm. of them were believers. And um, the host of the, the dinner party who was gay, 
said, hey, Becca, tell everyone your story. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I, I was just put on the spot immediately before I even had a chance to Eat have a salad. bite of my, my salad, <laughs> my fennel salad. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so, I, you know, as I was telling my story, everyone was really into it until I got to the gay part where, right. you know, the gay, be the homosexual sin part. Yeah. And then everyone started kind of like, getting a little like, whoa, wait a minute, what are you saying? And, and I was like, and it was getting sort of the, the heat, it was getting heated for a second. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. and I just, so that's when I said, hey, guys, gosh, I know. <laughs> I just want you to know that the only reason I'm here on a school night, I have like a midterm, a midterm is tomorrow. <laughs> the only reason I drove an hour to Malibu tonight is because I love you guys. That's it. There's no yeah. other reason. I didn't come here to, to win an argument or a debate. It's because I love you. That's it. Yeah. There's no other reason. I love that. I think, um, I, you know, this actually came up recently when we're talking about convictions and, and um, condoning or, you know, the, the difference between the two where someone, you guys actually um, on Instagram answer the survey of something you wanted to ask Beckett of, um, do we, or, or is it okay to attend a, a, your gay friend's wedding um, I think that can also be different from like being a part of the bridal party. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Cause obviously mm -hmm. we want to support and love our friends, but we also don't want to give this message of, of we're okay with this union. Yeah. So uh, right after I got saved, mm -hmm. um, I was out to dinner with my two William Morris agents at the time. Mm -hmm. um, one was a guy, one was a man, one was a woman, but the man was getting married to a man and um yeah. and they put me on the spot we were at the bel air and they were like so becca you're coming you're going to tim's wedding right and i was like of course i am like i just <laughs> kind of reflexively just like wanted to like Ooh. you know just like yeah so i said yes and and i accepted the invitation mm -hmm. and i thought it was going to be fine but once i got to the wedding it was a very it was a bad night because Ooh. As soon as I got there, I realized, wait, everyone is here and they're celebrating this union and I can't celebrate with them because I, I, I know this is a sin. So I'm, he I'm basically here celebrating sin. And, mm -hmm. and it was a very weird feeling, especially after just getting saved. It was, yeah. it was like this weird, uh, Ooh, awkward yeah. feeling. And then, um, and so I, so personally, I can't, I, I decided never to do that again, not mm -hmm. to go to a gay wedding. Uh, because again, you're, you're celebrating sin basically yeah. is what you're doing. And it's very hard to do that as a Christian. It's hard to engage in that, in that celebration. Wow, and yeah. with parents, with parents who have a child who mm -hmm. is, is getting married to yeah. like a gay wedding. I mean, it's hard for me to say not to go to that because you want to support your child and love them. And you don't want that relationship to break for mm -hmm. forever. Right. So it's something I, I tell parents this all the time. It's like, I don't really have the answer to that, but you have to pray, pray, pray about it and, and yeah. see where the Lord leads you on that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And then speaking on marriage, my, one of my, let's see. One of my last questions, my second to last question is, do you see yourself ever getting married one day? And, and what does that look like for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, well, the short answer is well, no, I let don't. Me, let me clarify, because I, 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 you know, we, we have people in our church that you and I know of that um, are gay and are married um, or pa preachers that we like. I know Jackie Hill Perry, like all these amazing oh, yeah. people. Yeah. So. I guess I know that's probably, it depends on each person, but um, I'd love to know just what that personally looks like for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I personally don't see that happening. Um, and I'm happy to be single and celibate like Paul in first Corinthians seven, Paul's like, it's better to be single. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I, I wish that. everyone could be like me yeah. and because you have more time to devote, as Paul says in, in mm -hmm. Corinthians, he says, you have more time to devote to the Lord. You're not distracted by, yep. you know, a wife and kids and all this stuff and the world. And, um, and so I really love being single and I, um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy being single and, and for the rest of my life. And I know that a lot of people aren't that way, but I, I, 
I feel a total sense of freedom. Cause I, again, I had been in so many relationships over the years and I'm just like, I'm happy to be, <laughs> free I'm happy to be drama. single and frugal and, and free and not have to deal, but, um, mm -hmm. and be able to just be free to, you know, travel everywhere and do my thing and, and, um, you know, yeah. be on mission for the, for the gospel. And mm -hmm. so I'm happy to be single. And I, I mean, who knows, God Beautiful. could change that. But for right now, I don't see that happening. Yeah. I mean, that's such a specific calling too. So it's, yeah. I mean, so accurate. Um, my last question is just specifically in this season, we're in a friggin' global pandemic and there is no matter which way you slice it, there's a lot of isolation because we can't all party like we used to and go out and, actually in a way use these uh temporary fixes to numb whatever it is that we're not uh bringing before the lord or kind of dealing with which is there is good to it but there i know that there are a lot of people struggling and falling back into previous sin or lifestyles um and i and i know some specifically with a gay lifestyle so i guess how how would you encourage them in the season to press forward to live in the spirit and, and not in the flesh? Yeah. I mean, the, the spiritual disciplines are huge when it comes to this, like yeah. being in prayer, being in the word of God, being, um, mm -hmm. you know, worshiping and, and just, and fasting and all the spiritual disciplines are so helpful because they're obviously the world is so powerful right now in the, the what the world is saying the influence of the world is at an all-time high right now yeah and yeah. so with social media i mean i think i i tweeted this like a few months ago but like the social media or twitter or whatever is like satan's masterpiece of uh, because it Ooh. just keeps us constantly distracted on every on everything oh, but god true. so yeah. the the thing is like I, you know, I say this, Dick Lucas said this, uh, one of my favorite pastors in England, he's like 97 years old, but he's like, we're either giving into the pressure of the word of God yeah. or to the world. And so the, the more you're in the word of God, the more you're going to be s stable and on, and on solid ground. And, you know, when I, I do this thing that, um, I highly recommend it's like before I go to bed, I just, I turn on audio Bible and listen to like a, a book of the Bible, like Hebrews yeah. or revelation or like whatever, or first yeah. Corinthians. And I just listen to it. And I'm telling you, it changed. I mean, obviously the word of God is living and active. It changes you. It changes. Like, like if mm -hmm. here's the thing, if, if someone is struggling and they just read the book of Hebrews, yeah. They'll be like, it'll, I think it just snaps you back into reality. And you're like, whoa, like, this is the truth. And like, yeah. I'm straying from the truth. And even if you, I did this recently, I, I listened to the book of Revelation again. And it was just like, whoa, like, this is <laughs> actually true. Like, this is happening. And like, and I say this too, it's like, you know, God, if you act as if, God is just pretend Jesus is returning. Maybe not tonight because then you just like have, order a pizza and you know, have whatever, <laughs> but yep. let's say like Jesus, if you knew Jesus for, if you, if you knew for a fact, Jesus was returning in three months or six months, how would that change your life? Yeah. How would that change how you spend your time? Yeah. How would that change how you spend your money, your everything? Like what would that do to you? Wow. And and also I would reach out if, if you're Ooh. feeling lonely or alone, whatever, I would reach out to other believers, even if it's on zoom or uh, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and just, you know, be in, be in community as much as you can through technology and, and, uh, and ask people to help you and pray for you and come alongside you. And so I think that's crucial, but really ultimately the most crucial thing is this. <laughs> I'm like, where is mine? Where is Just, mine? Amen. You've got to stay in the word of God because otherwise it's the, it's the sword All of the over. spirit. It's like you need it to fight the battle that we're right. in. We're in a spiritual battle. This is like yes. major. There's warfare Huge. constantly. If this yes. is a sword, you could just like <laughs> slay Rose somebody. Smack it right in the face. Yes. Yeah. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. <laughs> Bible Amen. slash Maggie Wong. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh my gosh thank you so much Beckett that that's all I have right now I know that there were some other questions asked but for you guys who have other ones feel free to just DM message him or myself um don't forget this book it's insanely amazing it's on Amazon right now um where else can people get this besides it's I it's feel a, like that's the best Barnes place Noble but. and everywhere but everywhere you, but on Amazon you can get audio you can get the audio version Ooh. which is really fun to listen to it's only that's four hours so cool. long and you can get are you reading it uh, no, it's some uh, some guy wrote some guy. read it, but okay. he, it's a good. He has a good voice. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Becca, for joining us. Thank um, you for so having me, Jessica. Oh my gosh, it's so good to catch up with you. I'll talk to you yeah. soon. All right, thank Thanks. you guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, wow. You guys got on Amazon Kindle. That's amazing. Well, thank you guys for joining. I hope you'll pop in on our next live. Um, give me tips on any other identity topics you want to talk about. I have a couple really great ideas and a couple guests in mind, but um, really, really appreciate you guys.